this is my official spot for this, you know, camera placement. But um, let me know what you guys think about this camera placement uh, because I'm trying out a new spot for this camera placement in this brand new bedroom. Uh, by the way, how do, you, how do you like it so far? You got the bed, you got the TV, another TV right there. Uh, I got off topic real quick, but um, we have plenty to talk about actually. It's not just the hurricanes and the dolphins, but we have, we made some history with baseball. And uh, while they're not the winner of the week, the Marlins, um, they made very history. And we're going to talk about that after we talk about these games that we're about to talk about right now. And um, first, we are going to talk about the Miami Hurricanes because, um, because this team struggled. Believe it or not, actually, they're number nine. They're number nine team in the country in the AP polls, but they are still the top ten. Um, there is a big. There is a reason why I did not put them in winner of the week. Besides, you know, this team. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. So, um, first things first. Um, these. Uh, this game was roughly, roughly pretty. Crazy, if you must, if I must, if I must ask, um, Virginia Tech, uh, they are the Hokies. Um, they scored their first touchdown to open up the game with Hendon Hooker uh, with a 53-yard rush. And just by the way, this defense just been lackluster. This um, this Miami's defense is uh, how should I put it? Struggling. I'm not gonna say stink. They're struggling. So, how do you struggle against teams that are not in rank of top 10? Now, to be fair, to give credit, Virginia Tech is a good school. They do have good sports teams. Um, so, we were expecting a fight. And we were in Virginia. Um, but the our response was, after all that, our response was a field goal from Jose Borregales. Bur at the 42 yarder. Um, then um, there was some uh, good plays. Uh, there was actually there was actually an incident in this drive. I think um, um, with Jalen Halston, eight yard run. Um, it only took them that one possession in after that first quarter was ended. Then De'Ara King with the 10 yard run. Um, with that with that possession, right? With that drive. Took them 10 plays at 84 yards. Um, there was an instance where I think there was a flag, and that flag was was I think it was overturned. I don't entirely know what happened. Um, to be to give myself to give myself fair, I didn't watch the entire game. I didn't watch most of the game. I did see the game. I just didn't watch the rest of the game. Um, I did watch some of the game, but it, let's just say I didn't. I didn't see all of the game, so I could. Because what I was trying to do that day was I was actually standing up for a hangout where I was having people over. So while I was doing that, I was also recording general gaming, and then I was also trying to pay attention to the game. So there was a lot for me to do that time. So the Eric King ten yard run, that part I did see, make it ten fourteen, and. Um, that pos next possession, um, there was either a three and out or it was actually an interception. So, with that with that possession, all it took is that field goal. Um, after the halftime, right away, right, eleven plays later, with uh, with the defense been the lackluster in that possession, Jalen Holston with that one yard run to make it a touchdown. Um, so it's 13-21 Virginia Tech. Now, it looked like the game is over, but I will, I will, we will get to, we'll get to the greatest part in a minute. So, after that, um, Hurricanes went, uh, three and out. Brian Johnson with a 38-yard field goal for the Virginia Tech Husky. And, and that next possession, it's been all Hurricanes. 
with great catches um, and a good run by Cameron, by Cameron Harris with a six yard run. Um, although they tried to do, they tried to make a two point uh, conversion and then they failed to make it. So they made it 1924. That insane shit happened in the fourth quarter. Um, with uh, everything that happened in the fourth quarter, um, defense actually stepped up to the plate. And right then and there, with a great pass from De'Ara Kane to Mark Pope with a 36 yards. But then again, a two-point conversion uh, did not convert. And um, ultimately, for the rest of that game, Miami was on, was Miami Hurricanes was on its knees and on its, on off their couches and off anywhere. Their feet was up, and this was a, this was a diehard situation with the Hurricanes because Virginia Tech they could score, but the defense stepped right up and they wind down the clock, and Miami Hurricanes is your winner of this game, barely. 25-24 is the final score. Just barely. Barely won the game. And, um, and you could say, you could actually say we got lucky. Because we were supposed to lose that game. And granted, we did get lucky. And with that game, let's hope it does not happen again. Because we need... We need our team for the upcoming games because when the when the upcoming games are important for the ACC championship, we need that offense to step up. More importantly, we need our defense to step up because if we can't get that defense to step up like we couldn't do in Virginia Tech, we have an issue. Um, second and importantly, the winner of the week is the Dolphins. Um, the first, the first possession of the game, and I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's actually, uh, there's actually a severe thunderstorm, uh, but let's ignore it, uh, we'll, I'll be okay. First possession of the game, um, they actually, the Chargers, we play against LA Chargers, and, uh, it's an, it's a great situation for the Dolphins because this is an easy Chargers team we can actually beat, and granted they did. But how do they do it? I'll talk about it because I did what because this time I did watch the game through the red zone. Um, so the Chargers went three and out, and then and then the Chargers were going to punt the ball. But here comes the Dolphins. The first punt of the game, the Miami Dolphins actually blocked the punt, a blocked punt, and the next play, the very first play of the Dolphins after the punt block. Zal Solomon Ahmad, not Ahmed, Ahmad, comes in there <clears throat> and scores the opening touchdown to make it 7 up in Miami. Right away, right? <laughs> this, this, that sounds cool. Punt block and next play, score. That's something you love, you love to see. I love it myself. Then, the next the possession it was the Chargers that looked like they were about to go down the field, but the defense was able to stop them. So this time the the punt was not blocked, and we actually uh, we actually caught the ball. So the next possession, it was a this this play took thirteen plays, and and um, we were about to go into the end zone. In which we did. <clears throat> However, there was an instance where uh, Tua actually threw the ball to the end zone to Devontae Parker, I believe. If it wasn't Parker, then it was Perry, but it's most likely Parker. So Devontae Parker, one hand catch, and um, was able to, well, unable to actually, and I'll tell you why. He one hand catch and then scores for a touchdown. But the big problem with that catch, which was a nice catch, however, unfortunately, his right foot didn't was not on 
the the grounds like his left foot was and unfortunately uh, that was incomplete um, but the next play uh, Tua throws it to Jakeem Grant with a three-yard pass it was a good it was a good shooting pass and that is how the Miami Dolphins are 14 and no um, second quarter um, there was that there was trouble so um, the Dolphins are actually going to go for a touchdown as well. However, that we have a problem. So, um, so the the center, right? Center for the Miami Dolphins, number sixty-seven, Ted Karras. All the fault goes to Ted Karras. He the ball was too low, and then he lost it. Now Tua tried to get the ball back, and the offense was actually trying to get the ball back, and they barely, they just couldn't, they couldn't get, they couldn't pick up the ball. The Chargers defense picked it up, um, and that led to the next touchdown. That was a good tackle by Tua, by the way. Uh, Tua was able to bring him down, which is pretty cool. Um, so, Chargers were going. 11 plays with five with 37 yards in. Defense was pretty decent, but unable to hold them off as as it was a fourth down play. And um, Justin Herbert was able to quarterback sneak it. That was a clever play too. They, I'm pretty sure the Dolphins was not expecting Justin Herbert to just walk right in there to the end zone. They were expecting a fullback or a running back play, but a quarterback sneak. That was a clever move by the Chargers. I'll give him that. Um, then our next score was a field goal, in which um, in which that that continued the streak. Um, so that's seven to seventeen. Then the next quarter, um, the Chargers had the ball after our after we had our after we couldn't go down the field. Hunter Henry with a two-yard pass from Justin Herbert. And um, that was a good play. That was actually a really good play. So then the next possession, Jason Sanders um, was going was kicking the field goal. The next play, Xavier Howard picked it off. Picked off Justin Herbert. And, and from there... We, um, or it might have been the other possession with Sanders, but during that fourth quarter, Xavier Howard picked off uh, Justin Herbert. Um, so in this touchdown, right, it was a play action play. The offense was going to go left, but somebody was open to the right side. That had the defense fooled. They fooled the defense. Thinking that there was going to be a running play to the left. Duran Smith was open. Wide open on the right side of the end zone. Tua saw him. Throws it to him. And that's an easy touchdown. Probably the easiest touchdown grab that Duran Smith will ever catch in his career. My props to him. Then, um, then it was a two-point conversion that they failed to do. Um... The Chargers offense could not get it going. And uh, in that drive, there was a there was actually a missed opportunity. And poor Chase and Sanders had a great streak going for the Dolphins. And um, unfortunately, he, he first, he missed his first field goal of the season, I think. It, it could be a second. But most likely, from my knowledge, that was his first missed field goal of the year. Um, that's unfortunate. He did redeem himself after with the 49-yarder to make it 14 to 9 to 29. And uh, the Chargers, uh, after that, scored a touchdown to make it 21-29 by Keenan Allen from the touch from the pass from Justin Herbert. The onside kick failed. And the Dolphins were able to go in victory formation. And um, Dolphins um, win the game. Fifth win in a row. And uh, third win in a row for Tua for his 
for his first start. My props to this kid right here has, he was so good. He was almost great. Um, but he was very good. And I, ha and I have a feeling he's going to be phenomenal in the future. Hopefully, hoping that, you know, his hip injury doesn't affect him, which I don't think, from what, I, from what we saw, it doesn't affect him anymore, because I think he recovered from the hip injury, if you ask me. But we, he's got to be careful. Uh, as we all thought, he, was, he wasn't going to play this year, because, you know, he need, this kid needs some experience. But the way how he's playing, he's going to be a great, great NFL player for the Dolphins in the future. Mark my words. He'll, he will be that franchise quarterback if he plays this good. Talk about Kyler Murray. With their, they had a rough rookie season. But right now, Kyler Murray is having a season right now with the Cardinals. Last week, we beat the Cardinals 34-31. Today, the Cardinals beat Buffalo. And I'm going to talk about Buffalo right now. This is unique because with this win... We actually wanted Buffalo to lose. You know why? Because we could have a chance to be on first place in the AFC East. Now, that game, I did watch the game on Red Zone. Kyler Murray throws a Hail Mary to DeAndre Hopkins. Three on one. And Hopkins caught the ball. And Arizona won the game against Buffalo. At home. That's a big win. Not just for NFC, e, NFC West. That's a big win for us too. Because we also won our game. We want Buffalo to lose. It was also a big win for Arizona. For their part. Because for them. They, they're they coming off from the loss from us. And they had a tough game against Buffalo. And they came out victorious. With that, with that miracle play. For Kyler Murray or DeAndre Hopkins. With that win, that puts Arizona to first place in the NFC West, third place Seattle, uh, second place Rams, first place um, Cardinals, and fourth place uh, 49ers. With that, um, we are one game under Buffalo in AFC East. And you know what? I'm okay with this result, but tonight, we actually want the Ravens to win. Actually, no, excuse me. We want the Ravens to lose. We want the Patriots to win. This is why, right? Um, wow, it's actually rain. I got mixed up with the words. So, um, we want the Ravens to lose, not win. Oh, that would be nice if they did win for Baltimore's part. But we actually want the Ravens to lose because if we want, if we if they lose, um, they don't if they do not go further up in the playoffs in the wild card. So if we win next week and they lose again next week, we can actually be in a better position for the playoff spot because we're in seventh. We're in seventh place of the playoffs. We want we want to be in third place or fifth place. We want to be those, but we need Patriots help. And we also need help to beat the Browns next week as well. And the Raiders. Don't forget about the Raiders. The Raiders won the game today. The Browns won the game today. The Bills lost the game today. We won the game today. So this is the pretty. This is going to be interesting along the rest of the season for the Dolphins. And if Buffalo does lose, which is which will be surprising. Um, we could be in first place in AFC East, and we will win AFC East for the first time since 2008. And we would actually we would love that to happen, but we gotta hope that Buffalo loses and the teams I previously mentioned, the Ravens, the Raiders, the Browns. We also want them to lose as well because in December, in December, right? Dolphins have a actually have a tough schedule. That tough schedule will determine our season. Because and that's in that month of December, we got Kansas City, we got New England again, we got Las Vegas, who are the Raiders, and Buffalo. So we have a tough schedule in 
December and January. A very tough schedule. So we need to be white hot right now. Anyway, that's the teams that we want to that I we we recapped on. Um, I want to talk about this breaking news for the Miami Marlins that um, they have hired a they have hired a um, the first ever female gen, uh, general manager for the Miami Marlins. They broke the barrier. The Marlins were the first team to do it in Major League history. And who did they hire for general manager? Kim Nigs. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. It's N-G. But she is the first female general manager and first, uh, and first American Asian female general manager. She's a, she, was also a, she was also part of the Yankees at one point. And uh, I'll tell you about it as I'm doing, I am currently doing that research as well. Um, she was a, she was a direct, uh, assistant director of baseball operations for the Chicago White Sox, an assistant general manager for the Yankees and the Dodgers, in which she won three World Series titles as the Yankees beat, um, they beat it, the, the Padres. Um, I think they beat the Braves as well. I could be wrong, I could be an idiot, but I also could be wrong. Um, so they beat that team, and um, they also beat the Mets in the 2000 World Series. Uh, they also lost to a, they lost to a, um, the Diamondbacks at their, that horrible year of New York City, which is an unfortunate, which is unfortunate uh, what happens. The baseball barrier always been the man the men and with the Marlins making history we got some great things going and hopefully she can actually be that that female to pretty much put put us in their playoff contention in the future it doesn't have to be next season but we would love it to be years on end this was a great pickup and if she does well as she did with the Yankees and the White Sox, I think the Marlins would go back to that contendership as they were in their uh, early years. And we would love that. We want all the Miami teams to be great. Not just the Miami Heat, but a potential Inter-Miami, who they are playing on Friday night, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So look out for that game. So... With Inter Miami, oh wow, we actually had a power surge. Um, with Inter Miami going to, it's actually pouring outside. With Inter Miami playing in Nashville, Miami Dolphins playing against the Broncos next week in Denver, um, and the Hurricanes. Hurricanes playing against Georgia Tech next week on ACC Network, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we have a we have a lot, we have a lot going on. I'm gonna go because it's actually pouring outside. Here, I'll I'll, I'll have you take a look. It's pouring outside. Let me actually close this. So uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to conserve battery in case we did lose power because we actually had a. A power surge for a second. Um, I will see you guys in the coming day. Uh, tomorrow I'm turning 22. So I don't know if I'm going to do a birthday video or something. But yeah, um, I'm going to go try to hopefully not lose power. And <laughs> yeah, folks, Mirror TV, if you like this video, please leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. And yeah, Mirror TV, signing out. Hey, everybody.